Okay, let me give you an update on how my flood insurance claim is going. It's been like having another full-time job, honestly. Let's get into it. I'm Sam and this is the Living in Tampa channel and we make these videos for you about what it's like to live and move to the Tampa area. This video is a little bit more about me, my situation. If you've been following along, you know that my house flooded and I've been trying to do my best to share the progress of that, what I'm learning from it, anything that might help you really. Also, we are a team of realtors here in the Tampa area and we'd love a chance to earn your real estate business. Give us a call, text, or email anytime. Insurance is a big part of real estate and then flood insurance is a big part of real estate in Florida. It, it really is. Flood zones are a whole thing that people are often trying to avoid and I did not do that when I first moved here. And did I learn my lesson? I don't know. Genuinely, I don't know. As I was selling my house, we had pre, we had just moved and our house was under contract to sell five days before closing, it flooded. 18 inches of water in the house. It was strange. Honestly, overall, like a very disorienting experience. Obviously the buyers backed out and we let them go pretty easily, no big deal. Because if I was in their situation, I would hope somebody would understand that I don't want to buy a house full of water and I don't, or I don't want to deal with a renovation or I, I need to move somewhere right away, whatever it is, it doesn't really matter. So I had flood insurance in the house. The premium had been paid two days before the flood and we filed the claim and started going through that process. Adjuster came out and was very clear about what the policy covers and what it doesn't. And, and we started working through all those details. Eventually the claim got approved. After a few kind of scary questions, the claim got approved. This is a house that will sell for a little under $500,000 and there was over $100,000 of damage to the house that insurance was willing to pay for. Now, I could argue there was more, I could argue there was less, however you want to think of it, but insurance was willing to pay over $100,000. Not much over, just a little bit over $100,000. But the thing is, that money... That money goes to me, but it has my name and the mortgage servicer's name on it. Usually you would send a check like that to your mortgage servicer and they would endorse it, send it back to you. The thing is when it's that big of a claim, they want to make sure you're using it correctly and they want to hold on to it in pretty much an escrow account and give you like disbursements based on expenses. They really want to pay contractors directly. Since I've been functioning as my own general contractor on the project, I've been breaking the rules a little bit and I just submit receipts to them and say, hey, here's the receipt for the air, the air conditioning condenser. And I've found a way to work around the rules pretty well. But the, this thing happened, the insurance company sent out their final check, which was for $68,000, the remainder of the claim, sent it to me with my name and the mortgage company's name on it. Then I endorsed it, sent it to the mortgage company and it got canceled. Don't know why. Call the insurance company. Oh yeah, this was this mistake. We'll send another one. Well, they sent two more. Then we didn't know which one was the real one. So I sent both of them to the mortgage company. And then the mortgage company was like, okay, well, we, I, we've talked to them, identified which one of these two is the right one, but we're still going to make you wait 10 days before that we'll send out any more money. And my expenses for this have been racking up. I've spent $60,000 and I've been reimbursed for 30,000. And it, it's, it's just a headache balancing this kind of cash and available credit and like paying people and, and can you make, get people to wait before you pay them? All this, all these kind of things. I think we finally got the money where it needs to be. The, the mortgage company also recently sent out an inspector to make sure of the progress. I think to make sure I'm not lying and fabricating stuff. The inspector was super helpful. He was able to document all the progress and all those kind of things. But we're getting really close on the house. The kitchen cabinets are installed except for the fronts. I don't want to put those on yet because there's still commotion going on in there. Um, they need to come measure this week for the countertops and get those ordered. And then there's just all of the rest of the little details, a little bit more trim work, a little bit more paint, all the doorknobs need to go on, all the new light fixtures need to go in. Now insurance isn't paying for new light fixtures. There's some things I'm paying for out of my own pocket just because I know it will elevate the whole house and force a higher price. 
force a bit more appreciation. And, and it's been fun actually to use this experience to meet so many contractors that my clients get to use for the next decade. A lot of local referrals of referrals and, and all these people just out here trying to make a living and doing really good, honest work. Another thing that's happened in the midst of this, my lender who I connect a lot of you with, his name's Clay, and my mortgage on my new house is with his company. And when we talk on the phone, he asks me how the other house is going and I give him some updates and he's like, you should call your mortgage company, Movement Mortgage, my company, and ask them to give you more forbearance, to give you more payments off or more time off of payments. So I did that when the fir this first happened. I called everybody, called the mortgage companies, called credit card companies, anybody, and just told them the situation, hey, can I have a couple months off of payments or accruing additional interest? They were very helpful. And my mortgage company on my current home gave me three months off. I just called him and said, hey, can we extend that again? And they gave me another three months. I had to do this long interview, documenting all my expenses and, and proving that all this additional money is going to this other property, but it worked out. Now, of course, they say at the end of this, this total amount of you know $10,000 or whatever will be due. But there is a way to request that they just move those payments to the end of your mortgage. You can also restructure your mortgage. What we'll do after we sell that other house is technically recast our mortgage. So we apply more money to the ghost of the down payment without refinancing. There's certain ways to do that and certain lenders that do that really easily and make that really easy for you. So if you want to connect with a really awesome lender that has all these kind of options for you, make sure you reach out to us. Phone number and email are right there. One thing that's come up in the midst of this, you know, thinking about selling this house that recently flooded is a bit nerve wracking, but I've seen a few signs around the neighborhood for companies that design these waterproof dams that kind of block the door jam, they wedge in there. Now, if you had multiple feet of water outside, it would leak in eventually, I think. But it's really interesting idea. What do you guys think? What if I had those like built for the house? I think they would cost a few thousand dollars total. And there's the, this idea that if you can just keep the water from coming in, like you're not gonna have this like standing water in your home, obviously might come in a little bit, damage a little bit of stuff, but not like this. Now, there is also the argument that you would need to paint the bottom of your home or your entire home with waterproof paint. When that came up, I'm like, isn't paint waterproof already? I guess it's not. But water could soak through your walls eventually, even though they are concrete. All this is crazy. I don't know. What do you guys think about making those things, or, or what do you what do you guys think about having those made for the house and, and offering it like with the sale? I'm curious how much people will remember that it just flooded. Maybe they won't, maybe they won't. People forget that kind of stuff because they still wanna live close to the water. And that brings up an interesting point. You know, it's really popular right now, whether it's true or not, that isn't the point at this, but it's really popular to talk about rising water levels with um, climate change, with all these kind of things to talk about, the water levels are rising. And a lot of the big influent, influential billionaires that are talking about this have also been buying waterfront properties. I wonder why. I mean, some of it is maybe there's, maybe they think these properties won't be there for very long. Let's go ahead and live it up while we can. I don't think that they make decisions like that. Maybe these properties were, will just get more and more valuable as the narrative of rising water continues. I'm not saying that the water's rising or not rising. I don't know. I honestly I have a third kid on the way. That's exciting. In a few months we're gonna have our third kid. Um, in the midst of all my life, my business, my family life, I don't have time to think about whether or not the, the water levels are rising. It's not actually that interesting to me. But I'm curious what you guys think about all that. I know I threw a lot out here in this one short video, but I appreciate everyone who's reached out with their support in this time. It's like a weird time and, and I'm, I'm thankful. I have a place to live. I, it could be a lot harder. It could be a lot worse. I, I even imagine like people that were renting in, in that neighborhood and their house flooded. A lot of their contents were destroyed. Now they have to find a new place to live all of a sudden. I think of a couple families that had little kids just all of a sudden, they don't have any stuff and they have to find a new place to live. That would be very challenging. I'm happy that I'm not in that situation. But I am super excited to show you how this house is turning out. I think it's gonna be a really cool place. I tried to solve all the problems that we were annoyed with when we lived there. So 
Um, we changed out all the doors to be solid core doors instead of hollow doors. What else do we do? We have hard floors throughout, so it's polished terrazzo throughout the house. We added more storage in the kitchen. We added more storage in the dining room. We added a vent hood. We added a lot more storage in the laundry room. Oh, and in the kitchen, there were these soffits that came down. You probably have seen these kind of things. You can see from the previous pictures here, they came down just above the kitchen cabinets. And I don't know why they did this in so many old houses around here. We just tore those out. That way you have a little more height. There's not a lot of wall space for upper cabinets in this kitchen anyway. So we went ahead and tore those out and it opens up the kitchen quite a bit more because it's not a very big house. And then on the opposite wall, we just did tons of storage that's like not super deep. It's actually pretty shallow. It's 15 inch cabinets, but it goes really high and it's really big. It's a really cool, cool kitchen. But I'm excited to show you guys the finished product. I came across a few um, pictures today of it when it had walls cut out, just drywall cut out. It's just like a soppy mess in there. It's crazy how far it's come. In the midst of this, we're still helping a lot of you buy and sell real estate in Tampa, and we would love to connect with you anytime. Give us a call, text, or email anytime. Thanks for coming by.